At this point, we've run into many questions where we were asked to solve. For example, solve 2x minus 6 equals 14. And we recall that to solve means to determine a value for x that makes this statement true. That is, the left side is equal to the right side. And you've learned a method called isolating the variable. And we found that this works really well for a whole multitude of questions, like this one. To isolate the variable in this case, we would add 6 to both sides. And we're left with 2x equals 20. Then we can divide both sides by 2. And we have isolated the variable. That is, the variable x is by itself isolated. And on the right, we have a 10. This is our solution. And we can check this solution. We plug it back into our original equation. 2 times 10 equals 20 minus the 6 equals 14. Indeed, x equals 10 makes this true. Isolating the variable is certainly an effective way to solve an equation. Given that, let's take a look at another way to solve this same question. And we'll call this method our factoring method. And our first goal in this method is to get the right side of the equal sign equal to 0. So to do this, we could subtract the 14 from both sides. On the left, we now have 2x minus 20. And on the right, we have 0. Perfect. And our next step is to factor, to turn this into a multiplication. And we can see that if we factor the 2 out of both terms, we get 2 times x minus 10 is 0. And now that it's a multiplication, we stop and we think that anything multiplied by 0 is 0. So let's take a look. Now this term would never equal 0. It's always going to be 2. But this term could be a 0 if the x was a 10. That is, 10 minus 10 would be 0. So what does this tell us? Well, both sides end up being 0. And therefore, 10 is a solution. Both of these methods agree. Let's try another one. In this case, x squared plus 2 equals 11. So we'll start with our isolation method. So we subtract 2 from both sides, and we're left with x squared equals 9. And the opposite of squaring is square rooting. And we recall that we need to recognize that it could be a positive or a negative. And the square root of 9 is 3. So, isolating the variable indicates two different solutions here. A plus 3 and a minus 3. And again, we could consider plugging these into our original equation to check them. If we plugged positive 3 in for x, well, x squared equals 9 and 9 plus 2 equals 11. Yep, that works. What if we plugged in negative 3? Well, negative 3 squared also equals 9. And again, 9 plus 2 equals 11. Confirmed. They are both solutions. Isolating the variable worked again. So let's try our second method here, our factoring method. And we start by getting a 0 on the right. And in this case, we do that by subtracting 11. 2 minus 11 equals negative 9, and so we get x squared minus 9 equals 0. Perfect, we have our 0 on the right. And our next step is to factor it. We want to turn this into a multiplication. We recognize that it is a difference of squares. So, x at the beginning of both sets of brackets, a plus 3 and a minus 3, and that all equals 0. So, we're at the point where we say, what would make this equation true? Well, the right side is 0, so we just have to stop and think, what values of x would make the left side 0? Well, if x was negative 3, then this term would be 0. And 0 times anything is 0. So, negative 3 is a solution. What about this other term? If x was positive 3, then this term would be 0. So positive 3 is also a solution. So again, we have solutions as positive or negative 3. 
Both methods agree totally. In this tutorial, we looked at a new way to solve equations. We first reviewed our previous method, a very solid method, that is, isolating the variable. And then we considered this new method, solving by factoring. In this method, we first rearrange the equation so it has a zero on the right. And then we factor the left side to make it more apparent which values of x would cause a multiplication to be zero. Now we know that a multiplication by zero equals zero, so we just have to look at the factors we've made. Now, if isolation works so well, well, why do we need a new method? We've proven that both of them work equally. Going forward, we'll start to explore questions where our isolation method isn't very useful to us. But our new factoring method will work just fine, and so we're ready to move forward.